Hatha Yoga Asana. Now the yoga begins. How can I support you in practice today? I just see calm and uh, breath work. Yeah, yeah. A lot of breath work. Okay. Well, you know, as, as we know, the breath is the doorway that links the body and the mind. And in this case, whatever we're coping with, grief, change, even preparing for celebrations, that without having that doorway to link our mind and our body, we can't live in ease. We can't find the alignment. So the poem that I have to start our practice is entitled The Elevator, and it's from Utamu Onaji. So let's find our calm abiding space in our physical body as an invitation to the mental body by calming, slowing down, and steadying the breath. Feel the breath as it enters through the nose. You might even visualize or imagine it swirling around inside the sinus cavity as the body hydrates and warms that breath so that when it reaches the lungs, it can be received more easily. And then in the lungs, it transfers down deep into the lowest lobes to be caught in the exchange with blood from the heart. It goes back to the heart in order to be pumped out through the whole body, bringing the oxygen and collecting the waste, not just the carbon dioxide, but all of our waste products from our body's functioning. The breath mimics that flow in through and out. Just as every emotion we experience, it too needs a path to travel, shutting it down, locking it away, or denying its existence. Doesn't let it move through. So here we are for Just Breathe, and it's an opportunity, it's an invitation to open the doorway between the body and the mind. Not because we're going someplace, but because we're being here in alignment. The elevator. The door that almost closed was open. Will the door that did close open again? The door that almost closed was open. Will the door that did close open again? How can you open yourself to the breath? And an opening to the breath, open to all that prana has to offer to process, to digest, to nourish, to live. Soften the muscles of the throat and maybe even take a swallow. Soften the muscles of the jaw and across the forehead. Ease the circle of the eyes and even the base of the skull. The shoulder blades 
Okay. Feel the breath in your belly. As it comes in through the nose, shift your attention to the expansion of the diaphragm as the belly puffs. Let the belly draw back and feel the breath exit out the nose, having done its cycle, having made its way through the threshold of this moment into the next. Sometimes life encourages us to hurry through. And in this analogy of the door, it might mean that the door bangs shut behind us. Or maybe we go through so fast we don't shut the door. Maybe we fail to open the door that we're moving toward and we run into it. Is life all that different? Using the breath helps us to prepare the way, prepare the body and to prepare the mind. But it also brings its natural conclusion as well. It facilitates a closing in anticipation for the next reopening. In other words, we have to evacuate this breath. We gotta close the door. We gotta end this cycle before we can open back up to receive the next. When I was a kid, I can remember my grandmother saying things like, well, when God closes a door, he opens a window as a way to keep on keeping on. But what I wasn't taught at that time is that sometimes there's a significant delay between when the door closes and the next one opens. And that's okay if we expect it, if we are content in this threshold space. But when this threshold space is inconvenient or uncomfortable, it's hard to even breathe, let alone pause for introspection and patience. So I want to invite you to imagine yourself in that middle space between where one door has closed and yet the next has not yet opened. And just notice what happens to your breath. Don't let it get too panicky. We just want to touch into that energy of unknown and uncertainty. And are you able to access patience? Are you able to give yourself permission to not do in the waiting? Because why? The doing becomes all about the breath preparing for what's next. Sometimes what's next is not yet ready for us to arrive. So breathe, maybe deepen and expand that breath, coming into a little bit more of that efforting, not quite a bastrika, but a big broadening and a drawing in. Big broadening. Now, so far we're keeping the breath pretty low but as I put you into that pause space, you might have felt it climb up into your upper chest. And that's indicative of our anxiety, of our activation, of our readiness for what's next, or our uneasiness with what is. So keep the breath low, keep the breath full to help calm and soothe. Whether you're moving through that next, next tre threshold, oh, that's a tongue twister, if you're moving through that next threshold, or you're, if you're in a bit of a pause, can you persevere in the waiting? Can you persevere in the efforting to get where you're headed? 
to healing, to connecting, to ease. Use the breath as the fuel to direct your mind, attention, and your body's energy execution. Let's move now into the kind of the precursor of Agni Sara. So it's a contraction of the pelvic floor lifting in and up as you close through the diaphragm. And then inhale, blossom the bottom. Let the ribs flare and open and expand with the inhale. Exhale, draw it in and up. Notice if you can slow down the pace as an effort to be more at ease in this pause, this pause to just breathe. Now, for many of us, that breath pace can lengthen easily when we slide in a holding of the breath. Now, this has its place, but in a time of getting comfortable and trying to calm our nervous system to be okay in the moment, that's counterproductive. So lengthen the inhale and move right into your exhale. No exaggeration of the pause. And this can be helped, can be assisted by closing the throat in the ujjayi form in order to shrink the exit and the entrance thereby making the breath take longer. So let's take a few. The most sattvic breath, the easeful, at peace breath, is one that is even on the effort and length and timing of the inhale to the exhale. It's the most calming and steady for our nervous system. But if our nervous system is still struggling to adapt, we're still kind of where we were and not yet fully in the pause, then focus on a longer exhale. That'll help to deepen the grounding, deepen the calming benefit of the breath. So let's take three more rounds, focusing where you will reap the most benefit for your pause to just breathe. Knowing that the pause itself is a gift and it's an opportunity to prepare for what's next. We show up for the practice and by consistently showing up we increase the likelihood of the accident meaning outside of our control that is finding clarity or bliss ananda but we have to practice we have to show up and some days it's all about doing the things in other days we glide into the ease 
But either way, we can focus our attention on the breath and then let it narrow into a focus on what is here in this moment. Anatomically, metaphysically, intellectually and emotionally, this begins the introspection. And in Patanjali's Ashtanga, it begins the meditation practice of Pratyahara, turn the senses inward, of Dharana, of focusing, focusing and harnessing our energy so that we can soften that control to allow for dhyana or flow state, which might bring us to an edge of allowing life to be just as it is. And that would be the samadhi, the ease, the allowing. So if you have the time in your day, maybe you proceed into a quiet meditation opening yourself up to just be in this moment as preparation and as permission that this moment is enough. But otherwise, we're going to close our practice of just breathing. Let the hands come to rest together. Take one more breath in together. Let it out with a sigh. Ah. <sighs> Are you ready? May you breathe deeply and move freely, labor lovingly, and live vibrantly. Namaste.